rolling. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1246, Feb 15, 2024. And may I have some uh, celebratory horns, you know, the bottom of the doctor. You need the fanfare? fanfare? I need fanfare. All right. I need all right, fanfare. All right. If you'll just I see it. I can do it. I see no, it. No, you ain't going to do it. I got it. Right. <laughs> On this day. Wow. February 15th. The first 60 of the calendar year shows up in our beloved state. It was 63 degrees on this day in 1921. Mm. And it was 25 below on this day in 1875. And this show is dedicated to Fran Itkoff. Fran is a female. Fran Itkoff, who is 90 years old. This show is dedicated to Fran. Nice. Hail the flashlight king. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Double secret emergency. Sure. Yeah. No pencil? No. I, uh, where is Dave Bliss's email? Oh, mother of God. It's terribly important. Is it's it, always. Is it under your microphone there? It. It's at the bottom. I got it's always it. at the Boy, bottom. I got it. <laughs> You got it? But, but first, I want to tell you why I'm dedicating this show to Fran Itkoff. Yeah, who's who Fran I do, Itkoff? I do not know who she is. She's a, a California woman. She's 90, mm-hmm. and she's been, uh, and this show again will be dedicated up a level from yesterday to the Great Reckoning. Okay. Uh, when we lose the likes of Fran Itkoff, I submit to you the Great Awakening, Reckoning is closer than we think. What did I say? You the came close. Reckoning? Yep. Well, That's a different deal altogether. <laughs> <laughs> the great reckoning. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> uh, she's she's ninety years old. She's been fired from her volunteer position, which she's held for sixty oh, years. No. A volunteer with the Multiple Sclerosis Society, because she did not understand that she had to refer to people by their preferred pronouns. You're kidding me. Wow. She she was fired at the MS Society in California. Shame on that. Can you get fired from a volunteer position? Despite previously so. winning multiple awards from the nonprofit group, Fran Itkoff has been volunteering for the MS Society, a nonprofit support group for multiple sclerosis patients for 60 years. Although her dedication to the society has been recognized over the years, the group recently forced her to step down after she asked about gender. I was confused. I didn't know what this meant, Itkoff said, of her first reaction when she was asked to use pronouns in her email signature. She was asked to refer to herself. Itkoff's husband is a patient with MS. He was running the Long Beach Lakewood MS support group before he died 20 years ago. And uh, Fran kept on volunteering. She took over her husband's position and volunteered for the organization for the next couple of decades until a representative reached out to her recently. The representative, who has not been named, reportedly asked Itkoff to use her pronouns, but she did not understand what that meant. Boo hiss. I hear you. Joe? Yeah. Do you think that multiple sclerosis society will ever have a reckoning of their own and realize what utter jackasses they were for firing this 90-year-old volunteer? Do you think that'll ever happen? 
Uh, no, but but <clears throat> the point you raise is interesting in so far as this has so intertwined itself throughout public and private and profit and nonprofit that there's two ways to go about preventing the great reckoning, I suppose. Outfits like the MS Society will have to uh, realize the foolishness of their actions or uh, or what? They'll just be swept along in the great reckoning like everyone else. A 90-year-old yeah. woman who gave up her life for the Multiple Sclerosis Society and she, uh, some failed academy graduate probably said, you know, she's not signing her emails with her correct pronouns. Well, which Fran did not know what that even meant. Fran's a woman. Born in 1934. Mm -hmm. Imagine what she has seen mm -hmm. in her lifetime. Mm -hmm. And to be summarily dismissed like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. You would think the head of the MS Society, the nonprofit, would step in and go, Wait a second. I suppose the other way to deal with the reckoning is for, uh, of course, you don't want to deprive <clears throat> MS people of money, but there's always that threat that donors could say, are you out of your mind? And until you rectify this, you're not going to see another nickel from me. Right. There could be that, but then you have the MS people suffering. So yeah, it's it, too it, bad. It, it, yeah. Compounds, yeah. it compounds the problem. That what in this particular situation, uh, the the adherence to political identity trumps suffering patients. Hmm. Now that's that's grounds for a reckoning. The yeah. the 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 fealty that people are paying to this ideological construct is trumping people with MS. Yeah. Wow. Real suffering. Yeah. It would certainly be all right to fire off uh, an email. Do you know what Lee Finky is? Let's get closer to home. You know who Lee Finky is? Sure. Yeah. Sure. She, mm -hmm. he, it. She's a first. She's a first, what, the first trans in... Uh, Transgender person yeah. to hold. Yeah. 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 She's authored a bill. House file three... 386 seeking a million dollars of your money to recruit LGBTQ people to live in Minnesota. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she has a companion author, Emma Greenman, a Democrat from Minneapolis, and in the Senate, uh, the bill is carried by the always reliable Aaron May Quaid of Apple Valley. And this would be to help trans people who move here make their make their transition more smoothly. See you. Now, there's a couple of points about this. Uh, a, I don't know it'll, if it'll become a bill. But the first observation I have about this is this by this rationale, why doesn't someone seek a million dollars to recruit left-handed plumbers to move to Minnesota or bagpipers? That there, makes there, as much sense. There's no, there's no, there's, there's no thinking here, and there's no common sense. Which brings in the second point: if we had a governor with a head on his shoulders, and I'm being very serious, uh, the governor would occasionally walk down to the floor of the house and tap the likes of Lee Finky on the shoulder and say, "Knock this off! This is ridiculous. You're not taking the taxpayers' money to recruit people to move to Minnesota." But this has been a main objective of our governor for the past year, is to try to convince people to move to Minnesota. I, but, I have a question. Who do you write the check to? Well, yeah, that's my question. Uh, is this just an ad campaign, Joe, no, or is no. this actual doling out dollars? This is doling out dollars to nonprofits, uh, which we're not short of, 
that apparently would be in a position that you, I guess you'd roll in here with the chairs and the couch strapped to the roof of your pickup truck. And you'd say, I'm, I'm, I'm gay and I want to move to Minnesota. And then these, apparently these nonprofits would have some literature for oh, you. Is it gay? I thought it was just trans. Trans, well, the so, whole LGBTQ, PRMBC, so, whatever. Right. If Sally, who used to be Sam in California, was thinking, or no, 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 that's the wrong analogy. What if Sam, who lives in California, wants to move to Minnesota, he's having a hard time making ends meet. Does he have to get the whole boob job unit cut off, or well, can he that, just throw on a dress? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Jordy was wondering, will there be somebody to vet them? Uh, right, exactly. Uh, at least as thoroughly as we vetted the providers the, of fraud food. Right, right. Somebody there to pop the hood, so to so, speak. So, Jesus. again, though, if you had a uh, – it, it's, it's, it's nonsensical. It's – it's no different than uh, if I would ask for a million dollars to recruit the restorers of wooden boats to Minnesota. It makes no sense. But what we don't have is a governor we can count on. We don't have a governor. Uh, and again, I don't know how far this will get. Finky's throwing stuff to the wall and hopes some of it sticks. But it, it's too bad we it's, don't have a guy as governor. No, but it's a guy can that. be a gal, by the way. Hey, it's bigger than that because this will be framed <laughs> by the likes of Walls and said, look what we're yeah. doing for rights for yeah. the trans community. No, this would, he'll love this idea, Joe. Yep. He will, he'll love this idea. I'm going to take a chance. Huh. I'm going to bet he would turn his back on this. Idea. What would you Why like to bet? Why do you bet? keep doing that with you Walls? You already owe me 10 bucks How from many yesterday. T- isn't this the perfect definition of insanity? You expect a different result, yet you keep going back to the Walls well? <laughs> well you're right. It's the definition of insanity. But you keep this up, that plays right into the great reckoning. Because some taxpayer who hasn't been paying attention is, well, let's see, that's the wake up. I've given up on an awakening. If you haven't awakened to this by now, uh, You're just not then you'll to. be subject to the reckoning. And you'll wake up one day and not have a five cents in your pocket, and you'll realize that some of your money went to lure LGBTQ people from other states to live in Minnesota. There being no reason for that, hmm. except yep. Finky's theatricality. I love zoomed forward on a skateboard to deliver this bill. I love your reckoning thing, Such. Uh, You know what? The tornado's coming right down your driveway. Yep. Too late to go to the basement. Yeah. You're screwed. Now, now, in addition, uh, we have uh, we have another uh, proposal. Representative Mary Clardy. Democrat Invergrove Heights. Remember, this is the first week of the legislature. They're throwing stuff right. out there just to see what sticks. We got money to spend. Absolutely. Mary Clardy, a Democrat from Invergrove Heights, has put forward legislation to give $400,000 to a program called Before Racism. And this would uh, tackle, uh, this would supposedly help kids as young as one from uh, from developing bias. Uh, there, no good can come of that. No good can come of that because basically what what that means is it's more hectoring of white people and telling them they they suffer from the original sin of can, being white. Can you give me her name again? Mary? Her name is Mary Clardy, C L A R D Y, and she wants this to be in preschools, child care centers, and early learning facilities to prevent the development of racial bias. See, once again, I'll. Trot it out. The kids don't have that kind of bias. No, it's the don't. adults. It's the adults that do, it, and they learn it from the adults. If you leave kids alone, they'll all get along with each other. And if they don't, if they don't get along, it won't be based on their their color, their ethnicity, or any other damn thing like that. Okay, stay with it, Joe. Stay with yeah, it. When you're on a roll. You're on a roll. Garage Logic speaking to the nation. Let's go to the state of Washington. And we learn that a diversity, equity, and inclusion training hit a roadblock after forcing firefighters in King County to choose between their deeply held beliefs and mandated certification. The program considered, uh, I'm sorry, criticized for its contentious nature, aimed at educating 3,500 King County firefighters and medics on anti-racism and gender inclusivity. 
drawing on teachings from Dr. Ibram X. Kendi, Brene Brown, and Victor Madragal Borlos. I don't. I know who Kendi is. I don't know who the other two are. The initiative was a response to a state directive requiring implicit bias and healthcare disparity training for healthcare workers. Critics, including several King County firefighters, challenged the training's political undertones and its potential infringement on personal beliefs, particularly regarding gender identity. The training's failure could jeopardize participants' EMT certifications, demanding acknowledgement of endless genders and an inherent racial bias among white staff. So here's a firefighter. All he wants to do is put out your fire. He doesn't care what color you are or what gender you are. He's going to show up with a fire truck and put out the fire. But that's not good enough for the state. The state must force you to bend to the ideology. A great reckoning is coming. I'm on the website for uh, the for racism. The training is called Stronger (laughs) Together, an introduction to anti-racism and gender inclusion aimed to instill empathy, awareness, and dignity in patient care. Yet its execution ignited pushback. It suggested white staff members inherently harbor racist or sexist views and had caused racial harm at some point. Mm. They were even told they cannot be not racist. Uh, We don't know that. (laughs) Rook, you're white. Yep. Have you caused racial harm in your life that you're aware of? I'm trying to think. Not that I'm aware of, but maybe by mistake I have. I don't even think by mistake you have. I really have not. It is important for people... Wait, the training warns some staff may feel denial or shame for the racial harm they caused. It's talking specifically to white people. A great reckoning's coming, people. This can't continue. How this do they, is not a sustainable way to have a society. Joe, how do they account for biracial couples where the guy is white, the... Gal is black, vice versa, whatever. How do they account for, I, I, for those? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. It's important for white people to understand the distinction between being publicly shamed for a racist act versus feeling internalized shame while being held accountable for racism. Mm. That's what one of the slides says. They get a slideshow mm. and they get slides oh, and fun. quizzes and they get videos. And based on Kendi's work, he's a fraud. The video training for anti-racism isn't especially deep or complex. It explained that racism is substantiated by racist ideas. The training tells staff they should promote anti-racism, anti-racism defined as ideas and policies that produce and sustain racial equity among racial groups. White staffers are supposed to hold themselves accountable for being racist. They're told to read, watch TV shows, and listen to podcasts by people of color as a way to broaden their views. Non-white staff are not offered any meaningful suggestions because the worldview expressed in the training depicts them as victims of oppression. And what will this do? Seriously, what will this do? This will only be another nail in the coffin of anyone that was wanting to be a firefighter. Just creates more division. Yep. You can't have a functioning society with this. How do I turn this on? There There you go. This this can't, we can't continue to lead these divergent paths. It's, it, 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 it it can't happen. Uh, What do you want, Reavers? I would like you to tell us about the fine people. At Precision well, Garage Door of the Twin they're, they're Cities. They're the garage door people. When you, you know, it's a new garage door guy, but you get the whole family. Precision Garage Door of the 
And they come city. to you, right? I don't have to take the garage you door do to them? You not have to take the garage no. door to them. Not like Pre- the chimney sweep. Precision garage door of the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. A couple of great points. They don't charge more for weekend visits. Man, have I been stung in the past by the weekend visit. Yeah. Holy mackerel. And they generally have the parts they need in the truck. None of that, oh, I got to run back to the shop BS. They're going to fix it the first time, the springs, the rollers, the opener, whatever. And if you need a door, they'll take care of that. These are good people. They're an equal opportunity employer. Uh, The people they hire stay with them because it's great pay, great benefits, great competence. Uh, Listen to the uh, Schoonover ad coming up today when competence is talked about in the people who get hired in these industries. Uh, Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities in western Wisconsin. It's a GL or own business. Find them at precisiondoormn.com or put this telephone number in your contact list. Precision Door MN, 612-263-6985, 612-263-6985. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona 1-800 next step 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York call the 24/7 hope line at 1-877-8 hope ny or text hope ny 467-369 you know the investment game can be awfully tricky especially in these volatile times and that's why you need the best and also somebody that you can trust and that's why I rely on Josh Arnold we know him as Mr. Money Talk around these parts and he's here for you so give him a call today for that free 48 minute no obligation consultation by dialing 952 925 5608. 952 925 5608. Josh has been at this a long time with a track record of success and he's here to help you. So give him a call today. No obligation. That's right. No obligation. It's absolutely free. 952 925 5608. And tell him you heard about him here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser. Ready to go here, yes. I can't walk because all these euphorians haven't shoveled their sidewalks. It's the end of the world as we know it and he feels fine. Joe Sujure says he who has not done his driveway yet. Bleep it. I'm I'm outing you, sir. Oh, hashtag it'll melt. It'll melt. Well, what won't go away is your dirty carpets, your carpets that have got dirt, dander, uh, disease. Well, maybe not disease, but disease. every six months, even every year, you should get your carpets clean. And February is the month for loving your carpet. Ask about the Love Your Rug special because Zero Res, for starting at just 119 bucks, they're going to get three rooms. They'll Zero Resify three rooms, and they'll throw in a free hallway. And then for your air ducts, 75 bucks off when you get your air ducts, zero res clean, but you got to let them know that the Rook sent you in for the Love Your Rug special. This February, get on their uh, appointment uh, list. They've got 17,000 Google reviews. Check those out. 4.9 rating on Google. It's a great place to have come out and clean your carpet. How do I know? Because I've been with them many times, and they do a great job. They're professional, and they back it up with a zero res. Got to love it guarantee. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or go online at zeroresminnesota.com and tell me you want the Rook Love Your Rug special. And business owners, get your commercial cleaning estimate from Zero Res right now. 
Z E R O R E Z or nine five two zero res. Say back to King County, the training that firefighters and paramedics are subjected to centers around gender inclusion, where firefighters and medics must pretend that gender is assigned at birth. They present baseball Hall of Famer Ken Griffey Jr. as an example of someone who was assigned male at birth. I, I don't know why they picked uh, Ken okay. Griffey. The training presents gender as a social construct. It's also fluid with a cisgender man who says they sometimes feel like a woman. The staff is told to practice saying their name and personal pronouns when introducing themselves. This cost Fran uh, Itkoff her job at the age of 90. 90. If they do not support or offer gender-affirming care, they're told they're transforming. That's also the case they're trained if they do not believe a biological man can be a woman. Hmm. Uh, and this is in Seattle. Okay. And they've, they've long since been destroyed by the mystery or in the process of being destroyed. Firefighters and medics are told that, once, that one's gender and race will change over time. When asked how many genders there are in a multiple choice test question, the answer two is incorrect. I, I, it's a long piece. I got it from mynorthwest.com. I'm going to stop reading it. Uh, it's destructive, and it's yet another example of the great reckoning that will happen to this country. It, it's inevitable. It must happen to this country. Mm. You can't live like this. Well... They're still going to keep pushing until we are that way, and then can we get it back is the question. In possibly one of his, not final, but one of his uh, dwindling correspondence from Bulgaria, Dave Bliss writes, I appreciate your discussion about Minnesota schools on yesterday's show. The declining state of literacy is a big concern for the future. You pondered why they would remove basic literacy as a goal for all third graders. To answer this question, it might be helpful to review some of the other goals. There was a stated goal to close the achievement gap. Closing the achievement gap between any arbitrary groups of people, while perhaps well-intentioned, is a goal antithetical to the advancement of society. We can set goals that strive for excellence in outcomes. For example, having a large percentage of third graders reading at grade, grade level. Or we can strive for goals based on equality of outcomes, all third graders reading at similar levels of skill. But we can't have both. Why? Think about what the goals are trying to accomplish. If we strive for excellence, we push students to read at the best grade level possible in the hopes that all will rise to at least third grade level by third grade. Most students should be able to make this goal. Some students will even be reading at a sixth grade level by third grade, but others will be still reading at a first grade level. Not all students are equal in ability. There will be different outcomes. Some will lag behind. But as the target is basic literacy by a certain age, many of the students will make the target. If we strive for equality of outcome, however, the picture changes. Those same students who cannot reach the third grade level, for whatever reason, still would not be able to advance on schedule. Their level will become the standard students are expected to achieve in order to produce equality. The result will be that the class as a whole advances at the pace of the slowest students rather than at the pace of the average students. Mm. They advance slowly but equally because equality of outcome is the goal. A policy of equality of outcomes always leads to lesser results regardless of the discipline. Thus, it is antithetical to a policy of excellence. You can have quality outcomes or equal outcomes. You can't have both. Huh. Absolutely true. That is why I think the goal of third graders reading at the level of third graders was removed as a goal. You know why? Because it interferes with the policy requiring equal outcomes. Mm. They're determined to have equal outcomes, and if that means we'll all be at the level of the dunce, that's what it means. Well, welcome. Now, Tom of St. Paul wrote, or no, Don Heideman from Iowa wrote, 
Joe, I hope you realize how good your podcast was yesterday. I wholeheartedly agree that at some point we will have a great reckoning, and it probably won't be pretty. As a GLer, I have the curiosity gene that makes me wonder why and how did we get on this path to destroy a once great country? My belief is that it goes back to a topic you discussed last week with the whole Ethan Crumbly situation. Who's Ethan Crumbly? Help me. Ethan Help Crumbly. me. It's Help not me. ringing a bell staff, at all. Staff, staff, anyone? Ethan Crumbly. Ethan Crumbly. Why I was on it? vacation last week. At some point, the parents <laughs> need to be more involved in their children's lives. Oh. Oh, Ethan the, is the kid in the Michigan kid. who oh, shot yeah. up the school. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. Uh, ask Rookie's connection about the kids in school where the parents are involved. I would eagerly wager that when the parents give a hoot about education and are willing to prioritize learning, the students do well regardless of their race or financial situation. I don't care how good a teacher is or how much money you throw at a school district. The declining factor, I'm sorry, the deciding factor on effectiveness goes back to the parent involvement. I believe that's why private and charter schools achieve better results in the basics of education, reading, math, and science. It has nothing to do with funding. It is 100% tied to the fact that the parents are involved and have made their children's education a priority as a way to advance their personal future, which, which Mysterians are predisposed to be opposed to. Mm -hmm. You have no business advancing your personal future. Why don't all parents see the value of education and prioritize it for their children? I would have to agree with the great living American Thomas Sowell. He points out that from Civil War time, 1870s to uh, to the 1860s, African Americans were steadily closing the education and poverty gap to white Americans. That's when the great society was placed into action. Young parents realized the way to maximize the funding they would receive from the government was to have a single parent home. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. Sol points out that from the Civil War time frame, from the 1870s to the 1960s, African Americans were steadily closing the education and poverty gap to white Americans. Then, when the Great Society was placed into action, young parents realized the way to maximize the funding they would receive from the government was to have a single parent home. The American society has been providing financial incentives to have a broken family, and now we are living with the results. Another solution from the left that had terrific intentions but terrible results. Unfortunately, they are unable or unwilling to admit their programs have not improved America, but rather has put us in a downward spiral. Their standard answer is always the same. If we only had more money, we could fix this. It breaks my heart to see children struggling, but no amount of money can fix not having a family structure in place that will provide the stability and the priorities for them to advance in life. I would much rather have the government programs that help families stay together to raise a family in a way that provides the best possible environment for the children. Good luck from Iowa, Don. And one more. Don't think you won't. Tom from St. Paul. Joe, Wednesday's podcast was one of the most dismaying shows I've heard you host during the 30 years I've been listening. Each story was crazier than the last, and you stated that the price will eventually pay for our collective madness is a great reckoning. I'm not sure if the following counts as an amateur link, but here goes. Your show brought to mind Joe Rogan's recent interview with Eric Weinstein. Eric and his brother Brett are intellectuals who are notable for having been red-pilled, as the expression goes. You know what? I should have looked that up. I'm not sure I know what red-pilled means. Can anyone help me? Do I have a staff with computers? Can anyone help me quickly? I'm on it, Joe. (laughs) Instead of to have their to have their perspective dramatically transformed, especially by introducing them to a new and typically disturbing understanding of the true nature of a particular situation. Thank you. Yes, Uh, that's what I got too. Okay. (laughs) Below, I've uh, provided a link to Rogan and Weinstein discussing the illegal immigration crisis on our southern border. This is something Kenny's been listening to. While the entire interview was terrifying, at the 829 mark, Weinstein touches on the dark hypotheses surrounding the influx of immigrants. And I think uh, Tom should have added 
in in particular Chinese immigrants. Correct. Yeah. As I believe you're aware, Senator Dick Durbin recently promised allowing illegal immigrants into our armed forces in exchange for citizenship. Weinstein okay. Took this, Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, Let me write that, that name down. Mm -hmm. That's what we speculated yesterday. I didn't know there was a name attached. Weinstein took this a step further, and what he suggested sent chills up my spine. He said, if you wanted a force that was capable of acting on behalf of tyranny against Americans, then a force that doesn't have a deep history with the rights of being an American or a longstanding allegiance to people within the country would be potentially more compliant. Weinstein spoke of his longstanding fear that one day our leaders will issue immoral orders to military troops in order to keep the citizenry, citizenry in line. The best, the best safeguard against this, says Weinstein, is our soldiers' loyalty to civilians. But as we're all aware, native-born people simply aren't joining the military anymore. Vaccine mandates and, wo mandates and woke ideology are forcing others out. Allowing huge numbers of unvetted illegals into the military would do away with this backstop, leading to horrors the average American cannot begin to imagine. Normally, anything that sounds remotely conspiratorial loses me pretty quickly. But the fact that this came from the mouth of a respected intellectual, a lifelong Democrat, mind you, made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Returning to your idea of a great reckoning, I believe you're right. Common sense dictates that we're observing culturally and economically. What we're observing culturally and economically is unsustainable. It will end badly and possibly soon. And I believe our leaders know it. I fear that this great migration might very well be big government's final and most brazen attempt to stave off our own French Revolution by putting arms in the hands of people who have no allegiance to the nation and certainly no allegiance to us. It might sound crazy, but Wednesday's show illustrates that crazy is all around us. Hmm. Well, I think we're all in agreement that... Uh, well, let me let me preface that by saying Weinstein, I've listened to this. Weinstein is very careful to say this is a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this is going to happen or not. This is a hypothesis. And he offered a number of hypotheses, some of which were far less alarming than this one. And as a scientist, you don't push any one hypothesis until you can prove it. As fact, you just search out all the answers. And, and he came to this uh, in the process of de because we're all we said it in our own crude way without being having the intellectual capacity of Weinstein. We said it the other day when we said, look, something we used to do at the border worked. Now it doesn't work. Why? And while he's taking that a step further and not only is wondering why he's creating hypotheses for what's happening. He, in other words, he believes there's a reason this is happening. Right. There's a reason this is happening. Why? And then he develops three or four hypotheses, one of which is loading up the military with people who have no allegiance to you or me. None. I don't want that. The entire interview Hell. was fascinating. It's three hours long. I'm one hour into it. Uh, the part I sent you guys was only 15 minutes, and it was about the Darien Gap and then the the border um, here in Texas. Weinstein noticed Chinese immigrants moving towards San Diego, all males. He, he said there might have been children and there might have been women, but he didn't see them. All fit males who uh, were provided buses, and then temporary uh, folding shelters at night that then moved on to the next stop. That presumably the government of China knows about them, which is um, baffling. No, I do have something that could blow a hole in that. Well, yeah, bring it on. Let's say he would love to hear it. I want to well, hear it. Well, if they're in buses, why are they even stopping? Just go. Go to San Diego. <clears throat> right, and he does mention that, um, that some of them are skipping it. Some of them... Uh, before they get to the Darien Gap or jumping on boats and then getting off boats. Uh, you know, and like he said, hypotheses. He's, 
He's all he did was report on what he saw. And what another thing that he noticed was that none of them are really interested in talking to Americans. No. The rest of the people that uh, make their way through the Darien Gap more than happy to talk to Americans about what they experienced. But for some reason, the Chinese males um, do not want to talk to Americans. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, um, 60 Minutes did a piece on this, uh, but they just went to a border crossing in uh, Texas. And there they showed a lot of Chinese people, but it was a lot of women and children. Kenny, is it a language thing, or is it? are they trying to hide something, meaning they don't want I don't, to speak? We don't know. Th that, that wasn't made clear. I Explain don't know. briefly what the Darien Gap is. It's just where that, that highway that goes from Alaska to the southern tip of South America it's a is it a forty mile or a sixty mile? Sixty miles? mile wide gap in that highway where the highway does not exist because where of wilderness. The thickest jungle you will ever want to encounter is there and they just haven't had the resources or the money and the time to put the road through. And if in fact they did put the road through, a lot of that um jungle would be wrecked, I from what I understand. It's an environmental issue. Uh. Do you think New York City has some problems? I'll say. Not one or two. What would they be? What What would be some of their chief problems? Crime. <laughs> right. Probably number one. Lawlessness. Um, you've got a housing issue uh, with a with lot of illegals. Too many illegals. Yeah. Bums. So now we're hobos. sending them this way. All right. There's a great reckoning coming because the New York City Council is now introducing a uh, proposal by City Councilman James Gennaro that would make it illegal to sell laundry pods because they're made with polyvinyl alcohol. <laughs> and uh, mm. the fines for selling the pods would start at 400 bucks, double for a second violation, and top off at 1200 bucks for flouting the rules. If the bill becomes law, it will also require education and outreach to businesses on the ban, the law concept. would it take uh, the law would it take effect January one, twenty twenty six. Polyvinyl alcohol or PVA is used as a film in pods that dissolve in water during a wash cycle, but scientists counter that it breaks down into tiny microplastic pieces that still pollute waterways and slip through filtration systems. So you can you can rest assured that New York is on top of its most pressing problems. That, yes. Everything that plagues the city. Right. Yep. Everything that plagues the city can be solved by a politician like James Gennaro, who wants to make sure Ma doesn't get her hands on a Tides pod, mm -hmm. you know, because that would really screw things that would, up. It's the end of the world. I yeah. bet his kids probably ate them. The I was going to say, I don't know if you know this, but yeah. those things taste great. <laughs> <laughs> they have really good breath for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for a timeout. You know, when I think about writing that check yeah. every tax tax season, yeah, what are you doing? these are the kinds of things I think about. These segments that we have on this show. I got an email from a gentleman who asks, Reeves, do not use my name. Subject line. Fred. What's wrong with you clowns? You're doing your constituents a disservice. Do you know what time of the year it is? No, not ISO. It's, it's tax time, man. Tis the season. You haven't even mentioned Linda Keller. Yeah, Ex you have. I did on Tuesday, Mr. No Name. I sent my taxes last year to her. She is fantastic. I'm more hillbilly than the wannabe on your show, and I did it all online. She makes it easy. I didn't have to drive into that wretched city to get it done. You need to tell all the new listeners about her. She's fantastic. Sign, don't use my name because I don't trust anyone. Wow. Boy, I like this guy yeah. a, a lot. Uh, KellerTaxService.com. That's the website to get in touch with the best. She does my taxes. She does Kenny's taxes. She should be doing your taxes. So get off your duff and book that appointment online today. You can schedule it right there on her website, KellerTaxService.com. You know, it's a shame that that guy didn't want me to use his name because Linda is offering 50% off service if I read no, don't your read email. His name then. I didn't read his name. So oh. guess what, Mr. No Name? You don't get a discount. Ha <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joke's on you. Wait, you used, you used my name. 
Kenny. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna send you an email because I'll need her to do my taxes. Yeah, but John, don't count. If you're uh, if you're a returning customer, I've never had it so easy. She sent me uh, an information packet with a bunch of questions and a return envelope. And I just stuffed all my crap in there, and I put it in the mail yesterday. It's so awesome. Candy, here's what I've said about her. She's more on top of my taxes than I am. <laughs> exactly. That's she, how she, great she, she is. She's supposed to be. That's why she's the best. KellerTaxService.com. Book your appointment. Get in touch with her today. And please let her know that you heard about her on the Garage Logic podcast. Green. Yep. Ice cream. Ice cream, ice cream. We all scream for ice cream. Garage Logic has got a sweet way to treat your sweetheart. A $25 gift certificate for Grand Old Creamery on sale this week for half price. That's $25 of super premium ice cream for only $12.50. Get your favorite flavor from the 32 flavors to choose from in store at any time. Certificates are in limited supply, so get yours now. If you blew it for St. Valentine's Day, Get this, then redeem them in either of the two Grand Old Creamery locations of Grand Avenue in St. Paul, Cedar and Avenue in Minneapolis. And remember that Grand Old Creamery also offers malts, shakes, cakes, pints, quarts of ice cream to take home, everything. Of course, you walk in, you smell that hand-rolled, homemade, malted waffle cones with the Whopper in the bottom. That is the cherry on the sundae, so to speak. It is really a sweet way to treat your sweetheart, so act now to get your $25 Grand Old Cream Revoucher for only $12.50. How, Rook? Visit garagelogic.com, keyword deal, to get yours while they last. That's garagelogic.com, keyword deal. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. Oh, here's John Knight. <laughs> well, thank you, Joe. Uh, this news update brought to you by North American Banking Company. Uh, before I get to the news, I, I want I want to mention one more thing about Red Pill because I know some of our listeners will probably send us messages. If I don't, it comes from the movie The Matrix. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a character is offered a choice between a red pill, which reveals the true world, or a blue pill, which keeps it hidden. That series okay. is great, The Matrix. I never Such, saw it. Really good. If, uh, if you want to really feel like a dumb dumb, listen to uh, anything that Eric, his brother, has done or talked about on the web. Oh, is he my God. Than Brad? Oh, yikes. <laughs> oh. It's so humiliating. So he's about on my level then. John Height. <laughs> in, in news, <laughs> Anaheim County Sheriff Dewana Witt told our friends at Five Eyewitness News she and her staff will be working hard to secure funding during the current legislative session. After Hennepin County saw a 22% jump in juvenile crime last year, Sheriff Witt said she'd like financial assistance from the state to help steer kids away from trouble and keep them in school. Witt said she'd like to receive state help also to purchase new technology to make the jail safer for inmates and corrections officers. Follow up to a story from a while back. Two more people, brothers from Minneapolis, have been charged in connection to that triple homicide last month in Coon Rapids. 31-year-old Demetrius Trenton Shumpert and 19-year-old Amari Malik Shumpert are each charged with three counts of second-degree murder. Those charges come two weeks after prosecutors charged 37-year-old Alonzo Pierre Mingo with the same offenses. The charges stem from the deaths of 42-year-old Shannon Youngworth, her husband, 39-year-old uh, Mar uh, Mario Alberto Treo Estrada, and her son, 20-year-old Jorge Alexandra Reyes Youngworth. Their bodies were found in a home January 26th. Two kids also inside the home. They were not physically hurt. Court documents say that Mingo posed as a UPS driver when he entered the home with two other people. On February 2nd, investigators gained access to video from one of the surveillance cameras inside the house. That video showed Demetrius and Omar Amari Shumpert holding the victims and pistol whipping one of the men before one of the brothers shoots him. Mingo is accused of killing the other two victims. Hmm. We now know it was an attempted robbery at a drug deal that ended up with a man being shot five times on Golden Valley Road and Russell Avenue North in Minneapolis last week. That man is now facing, uh, not that man, but different man is now facing robbery and assault charges in the incident. Police were called to an alley shortly after 3.30 on a report of a shooting during a robbery attempt. When they got there, officers found 27-year-old Marlo Randy Phillips dead from an apparent gunshot wound. 
The victim of the apparent robbery suffered serious injuries. Charging documents say that Phillips and 21-year-old Darnell Cornelius Lewis had gone to buy marijuana from the victim. Surveillance video captured them approach the video, and Phillips entered the front passenger side of the victim's sedan. According to charging documents, the sound of a muffled gunshot was heard before Lewis ran to the side of the sedan and Phillips fell to the ground outside the sedan. The victim and Lewis also appeared to exchange gunshots briefly. The victim of the robbery was able to drive himself to a hospital, and court records say his two-year-old daughter was in the vehicle with him at the time. The man suffered five gunshot wounds, including a critical wound to the chest that required immediate surgery. He also had a portion of his intestines removed. The victim did talk to police the next day, and he admitted he went there to sell marijuana because he had lost his job. When he got to the meetup spot, he said two men in masks came up to his car. One entered because his car's auto lock was broken, then immediately pointed a gun at him, according to court documents. He added that a fight ensued before shots were fired, and he tried to drive away sooner but crashed. Uh, The toddler was not hurt. Lewis now is charged with first-degree assault, second-degree assault, first-degree aggravated robbery. Yes, sir. Well, this just didn't really play out the way I was imagining when I first heard about it. No. Uh, And... uh, if if marijuana is so uh, happy and uh, we love it so much, we make it legal in the state. Why are we still going through this BS? You can't cheaper? buy it. You can't buy it on the retail store yet. Mm-hmm. Well, this this and we haven't named the uh, the uh, victim, have we? We have not. Yeah. No. We, uh, so I'm confused. Are we? We're not charging the the father of the two year old. So far, it doesn't appear to be the case. Okay. Yeah. He, but he's also still in the hospital, obviously not in great shape. So will he possibly? What kind of gun face are you using that you didn't kill somebody firing that close to him? He's got bad aim. No, he got in his oh, intestines. He got hit five times. Ruin yeah. is in his chest, and he could drive himself to the hospital. Is that a pellet gun? No. Whatever. They don't make them like they used to. No. The head of the Minnesota State Patrol is leaning for a role with an International Police Association nonprofit. Public safety officials announced that Colonel Matt Langer has accepted a job as the director of global policing with the International Association of Chiefs of Police, which is based in Virginia. Langer has been with the State Patrol for 25 years, including the past 10 as the chief. Before that, he served in a variety of roles with the department, including public information officer. And during his time as head of the State Patrol, he advocated for the hands-free bill that was approved in 2019, signed a pledge to make the agency 30% women by 2030, grew the department's internal peer support team, and reestablished a chaplaincy program. He also oversaw an increase in the usage of body-worn cameras, the agency's use of highway enforcement for aggressive traffic patrols, and a partnership with the city of Minneapolis to crack down on violent crime and street racing. The state says Langer's last day with the state patrol, April 2nd, Lieutenant Colonel Christina Bogojevic, or I should have Rook tell me what that's pronounced as, but... I think uh, we'll you did a good the- job, John. Yes, yeah, it's very you. Eastern European will serve as interim chief uh, when he leaves until the agency's next colonel is chosen. The agency has 917 employees, 656 of whom are uniform personnel. And Target Corporation is launching a new private label line of 400 everyday basics that come at an inexpensive price. The brand is called Dealworthy. It spans apparel and accessories, essentials and beauty, electronics and home items starting at less than a buck. Target says that prices on deal-worthy items would be among the lowest across Target's brand assortment, with most items under $10. For example, in electronics, some phone cases would be priced 50% lower than any other brand sold at Target. The first deal-worthy products will hit store shelves and be available on Target.com this month with new items like power cords, undergarments, socks, laundry detergent, and dish soap continuing to be introduced through 2024 and early 20. 25. John, may I introduce an email from the eastern shore of Maryland mm-hmm. uh, from Russ Gein, and it's regarding Kenny, and uh, I think the guy's uh, intentions are, are, are very charitable. Uh, Kenny has used the word apocryphal a couple of times recently, Yeah, when I think yeah. he meant apocalyptic. No, I thought no. I would let you know, since no one, including your resident condescending genius, John Height, seemed to notice. I love I the show. Russ Gein representing GL on the eastern shore of Maryland. 
I can make it even worse. I was not thinking of the word apocalyptic. I had the wrong definition for apocryphal. Oh. Completely stupid and I'm sorry and I you know apologize what? and Mistakes I feel can be made. I feel shame and he is right on. He's absolutely yeah. correct. You sit in I, a box. I, I feel shame that I didn't correct Kenny immediately. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not going to blame you too. Uh, this is 100% me and uh, yeah, I am I'm a dumb dumb. Why don't we uh, take a break at this point and uh, hear what Rook has to tell us. Well, Rook wants to tell you about Minnesota Masonic Charities mnmasoniccharities.org and at Minnesota Masonic Charities we want to promote and let you know and have you participate in this scholarship program and you learn about that by going to mnmasoniccharities.org click on scholarships you're going to learn that they've given over 13 million dollars in scholarships to the date you'll learn that the deadline is February 29th that's approaching pretty quick you click on the button apply now or if you have questions you can talk to Beth what do they do with these scholarships well they promote students and a lot of the selfless scholarship program is a great scholarship program because it rewards the nominee and the recipient learn more about it at mnmasoniccharities.org and remember i want you to apply now if you've got someone in mind because february 29th is the deadline uh, you can learn more about student scholarships community scholarships matching grants etc click right there to see the 2023 scholarship recipients those are the winners and who will win in 2024 I don't know. We'll find out. But you can learn more at mnmasoniccharities.org. My favorite day of the week, Positive Thursday. It's finally here. That means Mike Schoonover's on the phone. Positive Thursday, as always, brought to us by the official body shop of Garage Logic, Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care, right there in Shoreview, 1060 County E. Anything you need related to your automobile, your pickup, whatever, can be had at Schoonover's. Hi, Scooney. How you doing? Hi, Kenny. I'm doing very well, thank you. This, so might, this might be the right. only positive part of Positive Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to keep <laughs> trying to keep it happy here. So uh, if you've been listening this week, you know, um, um, according to the mayor, we are in the midst of a reckoning happening across the United States and I want to know from your perspective, Mike, are we seeing it in the retail and customer service world? And how are you as a business owner dealing with this reckoning? Well, you guys, you were right on. I, I listened to uh, I listened to yesterday's podcast while I was plowing snow last night at one o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, it, it, you guys are totally spot on, but I, I believe the reckoning is already here. We're already seeing it with the, you know, the good old days are behind us. And the good old days, I mean, you had craftsmanship, you had quality, you had uh, great service, you had service with a smile, you had all those things that were taking place back in the good old days. And that is that is that is not happening now, and that's the reckoning that's taking place. Things aren't being built as proper, as good as they were. Um, the quality is not there. The timing is not there. Uh, you, you know, you have you have uh, companies that can't do what they normally did. You know, within a week's time or a couple of days' time, or being able to get to you and service you within hours or days or weeks, whatever it might be, uh, because they don't have the personnel or the staffing or the quality help to be able to to be able to do it. And so we are all living the reckoning now, and it's just going to get worse. And I believe that we're going to start seeing more catastrophic incidents happening because we don't have the people that know what they're doing or how to do it or whatever. So I don't know. But, um, but I don't see that happening in your shop, Mike. I see personalized hmm. service and I see you guys from Nikki at the front desk all the way back, all the employees in the back. You all act like you really give a crap. Well, it's, you know, um, thanks for noticing, Kenny. But, uh, you know, there are going to be pockets and people and companies that are going to be similar minded to us where it's like whatever happens outside our four walls, we have no control over. However, what happens in our four walls, we are going to have good quality. We are going to have 
happy uh, uh, employees to serve our customers, and we're going to be accountable, and we're going to be knowledgeable, and we're going to do the right thing, um, and we're going to serve our customer. So, well, Mike, Mike, what's the hiring process like? You you have to be very careful that you're bringing people on board who are going to follow this idea of yours. Joe, it's uh, right now. You know, when before we added on and before we did this whole expansion thought process, I had a lot of people saying, "Where are you going to get the help? Where are you going to get the help?" You remember, there's a there's a lot of my competition out there, or people that do the same thing that I do, that aren't very good operators, that they don't care, that they they have toxic work environments, they have no standards or no quality or whatever, and there's people that don't want to work for the for folks like that. So. We are a beacon of, um, or a place that folks do want to work at. They do want to have quality. They do want to serve people, and they want to have fun at work. They I get work it. Hard, I get it. Know? I've met a lot of your guys, and I get a good vibe. I really do. So nobody wants to work in a toxic environment with a bunch of people who don't talk or don't want to do a good job or, or whatever. So I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for the future for our, for our business and and our customers and our employees just simply because i refuse to allow what's going on in the outside world because i i can control this now i can't contr- control what what the city or the county or the state or the or the feds do with with the requirements that are thrown upon me mm-hmm. hopefully we'll be able to manage that stuff hopefully we'll be able to mitigate the you know the the extra taxes and fees and requirements and all those types of things that are probably coming down the pike, but we'll deal deal with it when it comes. And the way you work with your employees and and the way the employees work with each other is really evident in the final product. And that's why we keep going back. And that's why you are the official body shop of Garage Logic. For Pete's sakes, you've been at it since 1938. Schoonover Body Works and Auto Care, always rated as one of the top metro shops. You can find them on the web, schoonoverbodyworks.com. Thank you very much, Mike. Hey, thanks for letting me vent. Rook, I feel honored. I don't know about you. <laughs> Hell yes. Yep, you cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. He's 30 years old, by the way. Ooh. Dumb and Dumber is 30 years old. You're kidding. Really? No, 1994, because I was a sophomore in high school when that movie My came out. My God, I thought it was yesterday. Yep. Wow. Ferelli, I just got done watching a fine series that he's responsible for that Kenny alerted me to called Louder Milk. Huh. Very oh, nice. that's a good one. Three, three seasons. Of he that. did that. Cowboy no, show. what? No one, no, no, no. Uh, it's a, an alcoholic show. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a, yeah, it's it's good. It's it's. Well what's the what's well. the actor's name? He was in Office Space. The uh, guy Ron who Liv- said Martin Short, Ron Livingston. Oh. Ron Livingston. Here's he's the, the news guy with John Height. That was Joe. He's the guy I stole that line from that said every day is the worst day of my life. <laughs> 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 and it's got a great revol not revolving. It's got a great cast. Huge cast. And including Canadian actors, oddly enough. John, including I don't know who Will Sasso. Oh yeah, Will Sasso's the roommate who's great in it. Yep. Silo full okay. Of tortillas. Anyway, back to news. Silo full of tortillas. <laughs> Investigators in Kansas City, Missouri, seeking help from the public this morning as they look for answers in that shooting that upended the city's Super Bowl victory celebration, left one person dead, at least twenty-one others wounded by gunfire. It happened as thousands of football fans had crowded into downtown Kansas City. Among the wounded, 11 children ages 6 to 15, nine of them had suffered gunshot wounds, according to authorities. It was uncertain who was responsible for the shooting, which took place near the city's Union Station. By Wednesday night, three people were detained, the Kansas City Police Chief said, but no charges had been announced. And officials say they're just not certain of any motive at this point. The police were trying to determine whether one of the three in custody had been tackled by fans at the rally, referring to videos circulating online. They requested help from anyone in the public who had been at the celebration and perhaps had been shooting video. Meanwhile, while not identified by authorities, the person killed was identified by a radio station she worked for. Uh, She was KKFI DJ Lisa Lopez-Galvin, the host of a program called Taste of Tejano. 
the uh, station, uh, Taste of Tejano Facebook page, changed its profile picture to a single candle last night. She last hosted the show this past Tuesday evening. May I parrot uh, Bill O'Reilly, among others? We have a lot of gun laws. Let's either enforce them or, better yet, make them more punitive. Why don't you leave the guns alone, but the minute you're caught with a gun you're not supposed to have... That's an automatic, I don't know, come up with something. Five years 20, in prison. 20 years. Goodbye. Well, going how, about, how about this state trooper incident from three weeks ago with Londrigan having ended up shooting the driver of the car who had a gun and was a felon? Well, he should have been in jail. Mm-hmm. Why not punish gun crimes? Why don't we do that? Because are we making, uh, never mind, I'm not going to go why I think we're not doing it, but we're not doing it. This guy in Kansas City, this could not have been his first rodeo with a gun. Why did he even have one? There's probably He probably encountered the law somewhere along his life where he could have been in prison. And then our governor takes this as an opportunity to talk about the gun legislation. Our governor's not pre- reliable for clear thinking. No, nope, he's not. Uh, and also, I believe we just witnessed our last ever championship parade. I already said that. I thought, oh, they're not. Gonna oh, did you say that? No, no, I said that at home. Oh, gotcha. They're probably not going to be. Able There's to do no. I, and it's sad to say that because that's just another thing being taken from us. Right? There's a great reckoning coming. Yeah. No, it's it's here. I, I hate to go against you. I think we're in the middle of the reckoning. When you blaming the gun instead of the criminal. When you blame the car for getting stolen instead of the people stealing it. Right. I mean, and we, we can go laws. on and on and on. Use them. Yeah. Yep. Marry more reality. Enforce them. Yep. The White House's national security advisor and leading lawmakers on Capitol Hill sought to calm public concerns after the House Intelligence Committee chairman warned of what he called a national security threat related to a destabilizing foreign military capability. He also said it's serious enough that the president should declassify all information about it. Two sources familiar with deliberations on Capitol Hill said the intelligence has to do with Russia wanting to put a nuclear weapon into space, not to drop onto Earth, but to possibly possibly use against satellites. While not addressing the subject directly, multiple members of Congress from both parties quickly described the issue as serious without stoking a public alarm. Ohio Republican Representative Mike Turner, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, had said in a statement they had made available to all members of Congress the info that concerned the national security threat. What makes more sense? Having incompetent, incompetent, not very wise people like uh, Alexandria Occasional Cortex wanting to take your guns or enforcing laws that would bring and restore order to this country by taking, by putting in prison people who either shouldn't have a gun or use one to commit a crime. But wouldn't those, Lock them up. But That's those same say. people will will tell all of us you can't incarcerate your way out of, which makes no sense yeah, whatsoever. Can. And 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 I got news for you. There's more than 300 million guns in the United States. You're not going to get them all. So why don't you just start using the law? Thank you. Consumer spending you know. fell sharply in January, presenting a potential early danger sign for the economy, according to the Commerce Department. Advanced retail sales declined 0.8% for the month, following a downwardly revised 0.4% gain in December. They did expect a, de- a decrease, but it was greater than they thought. Economists surveyed by Dow Jones were looking for a drop of 0.3%. Donald Trump's hush money trial will go ahead as scheduled with jury selection starting March 25th. That was ruled by a New York judge this morning, turning aside demands for delay from the former president's defense lawyers. That decision means the first of Trump's four criminal prosecutions to proceed to trial is a case centered on years old uh, accusations that he sought to bury stories about extramarital affairs that arose during his 2016 presidential campaign. In leaving the trial date intact, Judge Juan Merchan noted a delay in the separate prosecution in Washington related to efforts to undo the election. That case, originally set for trial March 4th, has been effectively frozen pending the outcome of Trump's appeal on the illegally untested question of whether a former president enjoys immunity from prosecution for actions taken in the White House. I've lost track how many trials this psychopath faces. Yeah. Is this uh, is this the Stormy Daniels thing? Correct, Stormy and the other woman. Yep. Yeah. God Almighty. Bill Post, who helped create Pop Tarts, 
leading the Michigan banking mm. uh, baking team. I don't team even know if the, I'd admit that if I did that. Oh, yeah, exactly. You're a good pop tart. You got a well done. I, I bet that was good for him. Oh yeah. Develop. Developed the toaster-friendly pastry with a fruity filling and Space Age Sweet has died. He was 96 years old. I've never had one. Never? They're delicious. I've never oh, had I a love a good Pop-Tart. Cherry. Oh, yeah. Cherry's yeah. the best. Never had one. Yeah. No. I'm going to have to disagree with Rook and uh, Chris on this one. They're awful. No, you're, you're, you're wrong. Do you know what <laughs> flavor awful. I discovered I recently? Don't, we, we don't need to go into it. Blueberry. But banana bread. Oh, okay. You banana put them in bread. the toaster? Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. The pumpkin. Why not just make some banana bread, you know? The pumpkin I mean, spice Pop-Tart tastes like dirty feet. When have you tried dirty feet? Well, that's not very... Uh, well, I do work for Joe Souchere, so, you know, I'm familiar with it. you got to suck on a toe every once in a while, huh? Yeah. Tastes have changed since he invented them, although the foil-wrapped <laughs> snack has largely remained the same, enduring as a sugary staple. They're, they're not healthy. They have upward of 30 grams of sugar in each pack, but they sell by the billions each year, bringing in about $1 billion in annual sales for Kellanova, a successor to Kellogg's. Now, this part this is the part of the story I immediately noticed. His name is Post. Yeah. He invented them for Kellogg's. So the name of Kellogg's main foe, Post Raisin Post, Brand, was his name. So he had nothing to do with Post. Do you get it? You see what I'm saying? There's kind yeah. of a run. I thought no, I, right yeah. away. I, I lost well, that. I, Post Raisin yeah. Brand. That's Raisin Brand is... Post is the big one. Emily Post. Post Malone. Yeah. Post <laughs> Office. Post the show. Oh, yeah, post I love the time post Coitus. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> post Pone. With a Pop-Tart. Modus Apparandus. <laughs> Funny that Joe would use Post Pone right after Post Coitus. Coitus. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry I blew the line there, but you know what I mean. I uh, sure yeah. I remember yes. what that means. <laughs> Yesterday... Just in time for Valentine's Day, administrators at Mount Holly Elementary School kissed a cow on campus while the students were watching. Why? Did they read a certain number of books or something? It was, well, Joe, it was a fundraiser for a newly created 4-H club. Well, fire and, that. Whoever kissed the cow, no, fire them. I, I disagree completely, and Joe. This is Americana. This is Americana at its finest. No, it's yeah. idiocy. Care what you say. No, no, it was a fundraiser. Fun. Was it on the roof new, of the school? Did they get the cow on the roof? <laughs> if you'd stop talking, I could I, let I'm you know sure. all about the yeah, story. We, you have to write today, so shut up. Yeah. You got to keep, <laughs> keep going, John. You got to keep going. Playing the part of Joe Sushi today is the underscore <laughs> Kenny Olson. With the taste of foot in his mouth. Yeah. It was a fundraiser for a newly created 4-H club, and people dropped cash into four leaders' buckets mm -hmm. for who they would like to see kiss the cow. Mm -hmm. Well, Mount Holly principal Kevin Hood's bucket was the winner. He was the lead kisser. He even put on lipstick to pucker up for the cow. They raised more than $1,000 for the new 4-H club. Mm -hmm. Hood, said, <laughs> Hood said, when I said yes, probably about a month and a half ago, uh, I said, yeah, I'll do it. When I won, I knew I had to do it because it was for the kids. Sure. You're a hell of a guy. Children who take part in 4-H tackle societal issues like community health inequities, engaging in civil discourse, and advocating for equity and inclusion. That was at the end of the story. I had to put that in just because. Hey, kids, read 10 books. I'll sit on the, uh, I'll sit on the roof until I lose my leg to frostbite. <laughs> Apparently at the end, though, they said, we don't have a cow. Yes. You have a bull. <laughs> right. You kiss, kiss the bull. bull. Gotta go brush my teeth. Hey, uh, yikes. I don't know if I want to read this story. Well, you uh, don't very, have to. very strange story from New York City. It appears some fellas had sex on top of a New York MTC subway train car. While it was moving? There's, Nothing there's is pictures. more romantic. Then on That's top well, of the yeah, subway well, car. Well, it was moving, yes. Pictures from the incident show a man's full buttocks on display as his pants are at his knees while he grabs onto a second man. A third man is walking toward them in the pic, and in the picture, the third man is on the next car. The second image, which is zoomed out, shows the two men with their pants down and embracing, while the third sits on the edge of the train car roof behind them. No, nope. that'd be dangerous. Don't look at me. Don't look at well, me. That, that would be that, dangerous. That, that is a problem. The transit agency slammed the obscene and dangerous stunt, saying the only thing dumber than riding on top of a subway train is dropping your pants in the process. That's right. Uh, I think so, John. Was the, train, was the train docking? 
Wow, can't really top at this underway. point. I oh. can't really top. It was moving. Joe, okay. that one that went right over okay. the top of his. Yeah. He let's uh, yeah. let's, uh, not, uh, uh, let's ban laundry pods. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, I mean, John, that's break. fine. That's I'm, I'm really yeah. Glad I you can't did. top Thanks, Rook, yeah. Rook's yeah. line. I cannot Thank top. You. So Thanks, you John. might as well move on there. Yes. The Earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. Uh, Willard Anger uh, would like to submit a word to the Foghornable list, and I, I say I must agree with him. The word is space. A lot of people, a lot of people. A lot of people lot like, of space. like space. Seem to be astronauts. using it to describe an activity in which they are involved. Moving forward, we would like to apply our various innocuous non sequiturs to the DEI space. Our sole agenda is to pulverize any sort of educational advancement in the BIPOC space. Or more positively, garage logic is a key component of the common sense space. Yeah, space is huh. way overused. Way space. overused. The final frontier. Yeah. I- these are the voyages of the Starship. Paul Petrzewski, <laughs> Royal Order of the 21sters and the Dallas Chapter President, uh, writes, It appears that the Dakota Medical, Middle School missed a true go bleep yourself opportunity with the ridiculous name change mandate. I don't understand it, but maybe that's why I'm in Texas now. If they need a resolution that would require changes to the beautiful native artwork, I say goodbye, Bison, and let me introduce the Dakota Middle School Buffalo. No need to get approval for anything unless they feel like calling someone in Paris or Montreal from Professor Google. Historians believe the term buffalo grew from the French word for beef, which is boeuf, B-O-E-U-F. Boeuf. Boeuf. Huh. So uh, I agree with, uh, you're, we're talking about the Dakota Middle School in Rochester, which got very weak need and canceled their bison buffalo because it's offensive somehow. Uh, regarding, uh, Dave writes, regarding Emmerich's observations concerning how we expect prison guards, school counselors, those working with special needs residents, etc., to be able to distinguish between deadly force and reasonable levels, but apparently not law enforcement, there is much more nuance to that story. I can assure you, having retired from policing after 31 years, primarily in Maplewood, School and community care providers at group homes, counseling centers, and the like all rely on police to be their muscle when it is needed. Right. Our officers were summoned to such places near daily regarding people who were out of control and for whom staff needed help. Emmerich is either Ill, ill-informed, a liar, or is delusional about the topic in which she portends to offer expertise. There are no magic-approved holds and the like which staff at such places are able to use to control the out-of-control, despite what people who apparently live in the lands filled with flowers and unicorns prefer to believe. I read this because uh, he has a wonderful point. Yeah, is what's the magic... What's the magic physical thing to do? They act like there's a magic hold right. that will that will work and not hurt anybody, and it could never be controversial if you only use the magic hold. Nope. There isn't one. I ain't never seen it. Sorry. <laughs> Jack Baker writes, thought you might find this interesting. We still haven't gotten our rebate check yet. We have been in contact with the Department of Revenue every month since September. They just keep telling us to check back next month. The issue is supposedly because we moved last year, even though bank account information remained unchanged. Anyway, we received a 1099 in the mail last week for the rebate we still don't have. I contacted Wall's office, the Department of Revenue, and the Attorney General. They all said the money had to be claimed, even though we haven't received it yet. Is that what the well, is that's what the well, IRS told them must be done? I asked for something in writing with those directions as they were forcing me to file a false income tax claim. They refused to provide me one. I'm sure I'm not the only person with this issue, but nobody wants to tackle the problem. Hmm. The guy hasn't gotten a check yet, but he's got to file the money and he didn't he's got to file for the money he didn't receive. It's a hell of a it's a hell there's gonna be a reckoning. I have found that when dealing with the Minnesota Department of Revenue, it's easier to just log on 
and do it over the computer. It's far easier than trying to deal with a human being there. I, I would imagine you are correct. Only because they come to us all the way from Lake Las Vegas, Nevada, temporary home of the traveling Lymans. And it's brought to you by Renewal by Anderson for the best windows in the business. Nice. Mm-hmm. It was on this day. Feb 15. In 1822, Henry B. Whipple was born in Adams, New York. As Minnesota's first Episcopalian bishop, Whipple worked tirelessly to promote the church in the state. After moving to Faribault in 1852, he built the first Episcopal cathedral in the country, as well as the Shattuck School, Mm -hmm. Seabury Divinity School, and St. Mary's Hall. He also devoted himself to working with and for Dakota and Ojibwe people who called him Straight Tongue. After over 300 Dakota had been sentenced to death for participating in the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862, Whipple interceded with President Lincoln, who then commuted many of the sentences. Whipple died in Faribault on September 16, 1901. Are you familiar with oh, yeah. Henry? Be- I'm almost positive there's a Whipple oh, Hall. At, at, at well, at don't squeeze the Sherman. Mr. Whipple. Right, Mr. Yeah. Whipple. Uh, Mr. Whipple. On this day one. in 1870. Feb. Ruary 15th. A groundbreaking ceremony for the Northern Pacific Railroad line was held at Northern Pacific Junction, later, Carl, Car- later called Carlton. Isn't that up by Duluth? Stand Correct. Anyone? Yes, anyone? yes it is. The South line of. to the Pacific Ocean completed on September 8, 1883, with the same spike used to begin construction in Minnesota, was the first single company transcontinental line. Mm. All right. Thank you, GL. Yeah, sure. the, the Whipple Hall is the boys' campus at Shattuck. Thank you very much, Mr. You are Whipple. welcome, Mr. Henry Whipple. Henry B. Whipple. Mm-hmm. Okay, Whips. <laughs> Let's uh, let's go to the promo book, Are you shall going to we? Promo? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, what should we talk about today? Let's discuss page three, Paul Harvey. A town council membership because there you're going to get full video and full show audio, including before, during, and after the show with the entire Garage Logic crew. And on Thursdays, you get to watch Joe feverishly put his stuff away before the theme song <laughs> yes. ends. Yes. You'll even get your own official member card and a certificate from the mayor himself, along with. Invites to exclusive events. Learn more about the town council and become a member today at garagelogic.com. A chop? A Thursday chop. Time once again that we pick up that phone. We make that call to our guy, Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold is with us once again here in Garage Logic. And now's the time for you to do the same. So do not delay. Do exactly what I did and pick up that phone and dial 952 925 5608. That number once again is 952 925 5608. You call that number, you get Josh, and he is there for you for that free, yes, I did say the word free, 48 minute financial conversation. Consultation, and he's on the line with us once again here in Garage Logic. And boy, Josh, so much to discuss today. I know you'd like to touch on earnings, boy, the Fed and the interest rates, but is fear back? Oh, my goodness. Fear is back back, Chris. We saw it the other day. My goodness, the CPI number came in a little bit hotter than people had expected. And oh my goodness, sell, sell, sell. We're worried that if the CPI was up a little bit more than had been expected, the Fed is not going to cut interest rates. They might actually raise interest rates. My goodness, sell stock and go buy bonds. Except when interest rates go up, bond values go down. So as yields were going up, bond values were going down. Bonds, at least measured by the long-term bond index, have actually underperformed investing in the S&P index this year and by a significant amount. Yes, of course, the S&P index is being pushed up by, we'll say, the Magnificent Seven or just a few of the Magnificents. That's Apple, Amazon, on Google, Meta, also known as Facebook, NVIDIA, and Tesla and Microsoft. Tesla, unfortunately, has underwhelmed, and some people want to kick it out of the Magnificent Seven. NVIDIA has overperformed as investors have been flocking to 
anything related to generative artificial intelligence, pushing up any all the chips related to artificial intelligence, especially NVIDIA. Meta has been a continued good performer as advertising has come back very strongly to them. Amazon, a favorite, surprised on the upside as Amazon Web Services accelerated more than had been expected and advertising also gave a push, not to mention Prime. So with all the fear that is out there about the Fed maybe not cutting interest rates, Stocks have done especially well, and that broadly speaking, as the economy remains strong, the consumer is still spending money. They're spending money on, we'll say, experiences as well as looking for bargains in the retail base. Now, today, retail numbers for January underwhelmed, so they came in a little below what had been expected. Tomorrow is the producer price index, which gives another reading on inflation, and that could create some more fear. Me, I'm very happy with the portfolio uh, that I and my clients have. My cash is in the same spots that my clients is. Favorite Apple is down a little bit. Concerned that Warren Buffett selling shares. Oh my goodness. Buffett sold 1% of his Apple holdings going from selling 10 million shares. Oh my goodness. We better unload Apple. Sorry, folks. Berkshire Hathaway still has 905 million shares of Apple, over 5% of the company. And 45% of Berkshire's equity holdings. That's quite significant. Warren Buffett is not running away from Apple. There might be a few other hedge funds, but not Warren Buffett. Another fear, geez, Jeff Bezos is selling his Amazon shares. Oh, better sell Amazon. Well, this is the first time that Bezos has sold shares in three years. He just moved from the state of Washington to Miami. He's got to buy more property there, plus fund a boat, plus he's funding his Blue Origin space project. I think that's okay. Amazon still remains pretty strong. Some of the travel and leisure stocks have done uh, pretty well. That includes companies like Airbnb, Marriott. Bookings will, will be reporting coming up. Trip Advisors has reported very well. And here's a small, we'll say, travel travel stock that hit a new high on better than expected earnings and said that they were going to be buying back, judiciously, of course, up to $7 billion worth of shares, and that is Uber, and they hit a new high as well. On the shoe side, Crocs did much better, and Adidas is probably going to pick up some more strength as Tiger Woods started a deal with Adidas's tailor-made product. The market is going to fluctuate, of course. There's always going to be a reason to sell, but if you have cash on the sidelines, as we've suggested, you can take advantage of some of these uh, pullbacks to add to your position. Excellent advice, as always, Mr. Money Talk. You heard him, GLers. Now's the time for you to pick up the phone and make the call for that free 48-minute financial (laughs) consultation by dialing 952-925-5608, where you always get straight talk and never, ever sugar-coated advice. Josh, once again, thank you so much for the time and the chat. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again next week. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Chris Reavers is a paid endorser.